Well, unless you've been living under a rock lately, <laughs> you have to have heard of the rash of weight loss drugs that are now on the market. And uh, you may be on it yourself. You may know someone that is actually taking these and seeing some of the success they're having as far as losing weight. Of course, with any drug, there's side effects, there's concerns. But the biggest concern that we are seeing is like any weight loss program, when I stop this, when I get off this, how do I make sure that I maintain this weight loss? Well, this is not a podcast to bash those drugs. Quite the contrary. Instead, it's the it's the answer. The answer to how to maintain your weight loss once coming off one of these weight loss drugs today on the Personal Edge Fitness Podcast. Welcome to the Personal Edge Fitness Podcast with Garrett Williamson. Health, wellness, exercise, nutrition, and a whole lot more. Got questions? Call us and leave a message at 251-278-EDGE or message us at Personal Edge Fitness on Facebook and Instagram at Team PE on Twitter or PersonalEdgeFitness.com. Good day and welcome to the Personal Edge Fitness Podcast. My name is Garrett Williamson. I'm president of Personal Edge Fitness. Thank you so much for joining me today to cover this topic that we're getting a lot of questions about. I'm sure that you may have been involved in some discussions on this latest topic, but about weight loss drugs and the effectiveness. And more importantly, the biggest question we're getting, of course, is how do you maintain the weight loss once you come off this drug? I'm diving into that today and actually have the answers for you. But before we get into it, I'm going to tell you how to get in touch with us at the show in case you have any questions about this podcast or any others, or if you have any questions dealing with dispelling the myths of health, fitness, and wellness. You can reach out to us at area code 251-278-3343. That's 251-278-EDGE. You can also reach me at Garrett, G-A-R-R-E-T-T, at personalizedfitness.com. That's also our website and our Facebook page, Personalized Fitness. Hit me up on X or Twitter at Team PE if you are so inclined. And and, uh, I've got a a helper today. The new addition to the Williamson family, Steele, is with me today, and and he is uh, a little upset that I haven't set up a second mic microphone for him. So you may hear him in the background expressing his displeasure about not being featured on the show. So I want to make sure I mention that you are on this deal. So even though you may complain a little bit. Okay, let's get into talking about the different weight loss drugs. And uh, you've, you've heard them. Uh, they go under a few different names. Ozempic is one that's out there. Wagovi, Wellibutrin. These are the drugs that they're also basically the same as far as what they do. They were originally administered for different reasons for diabetes. Also, one of them was done as an antidepressant. And they found out that they were having some weight loss from these drugs. And that's why now they're being prescribed for obesity. What the drugs do, they work as an appetite suppressant. I want to get too technical about this, but how do they work? They mimic a hormone. It's called glucogen-like peptide 1, or, or, or commonly known as GLP-1. And it's an intestinal hormone that is released after eating and typically makes people feel fuller. Now, this is the, the GLP-1 is what we talk about, about the 15-minute lag that I've spoken about as far as giving people advice about how to control their intake. There's a 15-minute lag between your digestion system and your brain telling your brain, hey, I'm full, stop, I'm, I've had enough. This is what they're talking about. Using this drug, it kicks in early, and so therefore it gets people to control their amounts. Now, one point I will make about this is the point I've made several times, and I've done several podcasts on it. I talk about it all the time. I've recently spoken at a group here in Mobile about this topic, and I talk about it. I feel like I talk about it every day, and that is the ridiculous concept that there is anything such as bad food. And as you see in this drug, what are they controlling? They're not controlling you not eating certain foods, what is it controlling? It's it's helping you control the amount. So obviously, and what we've said the, the entire time is that the amounts is what needs to be controlled, not the types of food. So that's what these drugs do. Now, I don't want anybody thinking that, that I'm against these drugs by any means. I'm in the obesity business. I've done a podcast on this. I talk about this quite often, and that is the number one killer. The number one killer, as rated by the National Institute of Health, is heart disease, and with cancer following a close second. And I always said that that's not really the number one killer. As you've heard me talk about this before, the top 10 killers, I'm not going to name all 10 of them, but just to give you an idea, heart disease, cancer, lung complications, accidents, now it's kind of off to the side, but uh, kidney failure, and I, I could go on. But these are all diseases or abnormalities that you don't catch. You don't catch heart disease. There are different things that cause cancer, but we don't walk down the street and all of a sudden you catch cancer like you catch a cold. What causes these things, these abnormalities, are what we call risk factors. And you've heard me talk about this before. The number one risk factor for seven, seven of the top ten killers is obesity. It's number nine for cancer. It happens to be number two for Alzheimer's. And so I say, I always argue that obesity is number one killer. And if we have something out there 
that helps combat obesity. With all due respect, folks, I want to get every personal training client I possibly can. I would love to make this business, you know, just grow like you wouldn't believe. But if we could control obesity, my Lord, the longevity, the quality of life, I argue that some of the top 10 killers wouldn't even be on the top 10 list. I make a strong argument that I'm quite certain that heart disease definitely wouldn't be number one. Where it would be, I have no idea. But if you cut obesity, you control those things. And that is something that I hope I'm contributing to. We know for a fact that we are getting people from being obese to not being obese anymore. So anything that, that works towards that, I'm a huge fan of. I really am. And this this, this uh, happened when other drugs came out and even procedures. When the gastric sleeve and the gastric bypass came out, I had people asking me, do you think that's a good idea? Do you think it's a good idea? For everybody, no. And, and I don't think all types of lifting are, are for everybody. It doesn't work for their head or whatever. But was I against it? No. No. If there's a, something prescribed by your doctor and, and, and how they recommended, you're at that state. Yes. It's the follow through. It's the follow through on all of these where I have a question. It's a follow through and not having a plan, not having an effective plan or knowing how to plan for this follow through has always been the problem. And these drugs are no different. They're effective short term. And obviously, we don't have any idea what the long term effects are of the drugs. And I'm not here to talk about that. We have had that in the past with FinFin and Redux, where we found out later back in 19, about 99, 2000, when that, those were very prevalent, we found out they were causing heart problems. And so they were cut. As you've probably heard me say several times, my wife was a drug rep for Merck Pharmaceuticals for 15 years. I come from a medical family. I am a big fan of modern medical science. So I'm, I'm not inherently against using this type of technique. But understanding what is happening and then understanding how are you going to maintain this? That is the big question. And that's what I want to talk about today is once you're on this drug, or obviously you want to maintain the weight loss if you've gotten it, you've got to understand what's going on why we became overweight in the first place, what's actually causing it, and how to control that. And honestly, if you're on the drug, this is a great time to address this. This is a fantastic time to address this. We've had clients come in recently. They came in because right now the drugs are extremely expensive, and they're interested, hey, look, I want to I want to maintain this now. I want to maintain this, and they don't know, and I understand that. And so we're helping them maintain it. There's a common misconception, many misconceptions, about weight gain, obesity, and also weight loss. And I'm here to dispel those for you. And biggest mistake I see people make is thinking, okay, yeah, I've heard about that happening, but that's not going to happen to me. No, no, no. As soon as I get the weight off, I'm going to keep it off, and I'm going to do things I have never done before, or I did it once before. Don't worry, Garrett. Back when I was so-and-so years old, I did this, and I know I can do it. Well, if you did it back then, whatever it was, whatever nutritional changes, whatever exercise changes you made, then why are you... Why are you back at that point? Why are you back at the point of, of obesity or overweight? Also, another fallacy is this idea of longevity fat. I don't know how to, I don't know how to call it, what to call it, I, where I've had clients come in and tell me that, you know, I had a baby and I haven't been able to get rid of the baby fat. Okay, well, how old is your baby? My baby's a year old. Okay, trust me, you may have gained the weight during that time, but it's the fat that you're dealing with is not the same fat <laughs> you had when you had your baby a year later. It's not the same fat. Uh, what is happening is you're actually maintaining it. You're renewing that fat. Just like your body goes through a constant systems check, and it's looking to see if you've used muscle lately. It's checking all the time. Have you used that shoulder lately? Have you used this muscle? Because muscle takes a lot of energy to maintain. If you don't maintain it, boom, you lose it. And so those muscle cells are regenerating. And if you do use that muscle, break that muscle tissue, it's building more muscle cells. It's renewing that. It's maintaining that muscle. Fat is the same way. And what I mean by that is your body's not wanting to hold on to fat, but it's understanding that if you're overeating, then it is trying to prepare. It thinks you're preparing for some kind of starvation time coming up. It thinks you're preparing like a bear would. You're going to go into hibernation or you need it for warmth. And so that's why your body maintains this fat. Common problem that I have people said, well, back then I overate and gained this fat. I haven't overeaten since then. Well, actually, yeah, you have. If you had not overeaten, then you would have lost the weight. Simple. If you're if you're 150 pounds, just make up these numbers. And all of a sudden, because of an event in your life, you jump to 180, 200. If you're staying at 200 or 180 or 200, then you're eating for 180, 200. The period. Now, what happens is when we take one of these drugs or whatever, this does this causes that appetite suppressant. It causes you to feel like you're full. Therefore, it causes you to stop eating so much. But once you get off of that, you haven't addressed why. You may address the fact that, oh, I know I overeat, so I'm just going to stop overeating. Okay, you haven't addressed why you overeat. And there's one reason why we overeat. And if you're in this territory, I promise you, it's you too. 
I guarantee you. Too many times I say that to people that, that it's because you're overeating. Oh, no, no, I'm not overeating. I'm just reading the wrong things. No, no, you're overeating. No matter what you're eating, you're overeating. The quote-unquote wrong things in a low caloric amount do not cause you to be overweight. They don't. It's a sense of overeating. And there's only one reason, and one reason only why we overeat, and that's cravings. You've heard me talk about this before. So the why behind that is understanding why do we crave. And taking the medication does not address that. You may think, oh, yeah, but once I get the weight off, I won't have that anymore. Yeah, you will. Guarantee you, because it has nothing to do with food. Nothing to do with food. Guarantee you. I said there's one reason why we overeat. It's called cravings. Well, there's only two reasons, two reasons and two reasons only. I've seen those signs before that you see on social media. You know, it puts a statement out there and says, fight me on it or argue with me or whatever. That's mine. There's one reason why we overeat, which is craving. And there's only two reasons why we crave. Two reasons. Fight me on that. (laughs) And the two reasons are, number one, 40% of the reason why we overeat is lack of water. You've heard me talk about this before. Your body knows it needs a large amount of water on a daily basis. Your body, everybody, everybody's body needs that. Doesn't doesn't matter if you tell me, I hardly ever drink water. My body doesn't. Your body does. I guarantee you. And what it's doing, if you're not getting enough water in, it's doing a couple things. First thing, it's going to work off of whatever water you give it. So therefore, it's going to shut down a lot of function. You're not going to think as fast. Your skin's going to dry up. You're going to look older. All your processes are going to slow down. Your energy level is going to go down. But that's okay. If you're going to give it a low amount of water, that's what it's going to do. The other thing it's going to do is it's going to make you get water. And that's where the cravings come in. The way it does that is that it, when it's, it knows, hey, look, I need some water. That's okay. I will use this example. Use the name of somebody named Kevin. Well, the body is an intelligent machine. It's the most intelligent machine you'll ever encounter. And it knows that Kevin it has taught his body a pattern, a pattern of dehydration. And if you're not drinking 100 ounces of water a day, every day, every seven days a week, in National Don't Drink Water Day, that day too, every day if you're not taking in 100 ounces, your body's going to say, okay, you're in a dehydrated state, and when you need water, I'll make you get water. And the way it does that is it looks into your brain, because cravings are located in the brain, not located in the body, and it's going to stoke that salt, sugar, alcohol, or caffeine, the four types of cravings that we have for food. And it's going to stoke that, whatever yours is. Too many people tell me, you know, I don't have a sweet tooth, whatever. I like salty things. Okay, there's your addiction. There's what your body craves. And you're going to go and eat something, and your body's going to keep stoking that craving until you start drinking something or taking enough water to satisfy the requirement for right then and there. And then as soon as you need some more water, if you haven't had enough, it's going to stoke that craving again. So number one, 40% of the reason why we overeat is lack of water. 60%. The vast majority of why we crave, therefore, why we overeat, is stress, period. I've had people say that to me, of course. Well, you got to understand, I'm a stress eater. Well, i got a little secret for you. Everybody that's overweight is a stress eater. Congratulations. (laughs) You're a stress eater. Uh, Lack of water is only 40%. 60% of the reason we overeat is stress. I've used this example so many times. The one strong example I use that if somebody wants to say it's not stress or water, usually people say, I just eat because I'm bored. Well, boredom is a form of stress. You feel like you should be doing something. You're not doing something. That is a form of stress. And you're mitigating that stress. You're medicating it with salt, sugar, alcohol, or caffeine. No different. No different than somebody medicating stress by taking a drink or doing some drugs. Think about it. If you have somebody that's overeating or drinks too much coffee, oh my gosh, he's just a happy guy. He loves his 20 cups of coffee a day. Don't don't bother him before he hadn't had his cup of coffee. Ha, ha, ha. But if you change that substance from coffee to bourbon, you're going to quickly ask, wait a second, what's what's wrong with you? What's what's going on in your life? Overeating is the exact same thing. So let's go back to taking these drugs and being on this on this appetite suppressant and it's getting the weight off and you're feeling better about yourself. One thing, you start to feel more confident. We see that when people go through a natural weight loss through diet and exercise. The confidence changes. Well, when your confidence changes, your stress is reduced. Now, we think, okay, great, Gary, I'll just lose the weight on the drug and I'll get off the drug and my confidence will be there, I'll be fine. Promise you, guarantee you, <laughs> that won't be the case unless you have a way of mitigating that stress. So how do we do that? How do we address that? Well, what we're telling our clients that are coming in that are on these drugs, again, I can't say this enough, not against them. I will be if we find out there's long-term side effects that are very harmful, but I'm not against any diet or anything like this that's not illegal or moral or fattening. So once you're on that, at the same time, you need to start addressing that why. Why are we craving? What is it in my life that's, that's causing that? And I've got a couple of tools to help you do that. 
obviously, great time for anybody to start an exercise program. And why? Okay, obviously, we need some way to burn some calories going out. You know, help calories going out, help burn calories by exercise. But the other thing that it does, that helps to mitigate stress. The second thing is getting yourself on a pattern for at least a brief while, getting yourself on a pattern of focusing on your food. We have an app that does this. There's my fitness pal and some of these others. We've got one that's even easier. And what it does is you're just basically taking a picture of your food and giving it a thumbs up, thumb down, but you're trying to track. You're basically eyeballing it and trying to track. Just keep an eye on your food and start learning something about amounts. But the biggest part of it, and we address this actually in our Catalyst program, the biggest part of it is, okay, understanding when and why were you craving? When and why were you having stress? I have stress all day, every day. I promise you, you're not eating 24-7. So there are times that you're more stressed than you aren't, even though you may have high stress throughout the day. But you can start to identify what we call those stressors. And by identifying those stressors and finding a healthy way to mitigate it, is your answer to long-term success. And using these drugs for a part-time, for the beginning, to help you get into this, a big fan of that. Big fan of that. But making sure you have a plan to address that other. And I promise you, the recipe for failure, and I've seen this time and time again. I've seen this, actually somebody graduated our Catalyst program, and I, I would plead with them. I've actually kicked people out of the program before because I'd plead with them because they couldn't get off this, oh, I'm going to do anything, nothing but eat good food from now on. It fails every time. It fails every single time. We've been trying to research the quote-unquote good foods for 70 years. We've been trying to, trying to get everybody to eat nothing but these good foods, and we're going to try this new program called There's Food Deserts Out There, and we're going to solve those food deserts. We're going to change the school lunch program. Never works. Why? Because that's not the problem. And you can hear Steele's a little upset about it also. But the type of food is not the problem. The problem is it's here. It's in that mindset. It's in your head. And once you start gaining that confidence, once you start losing that weight or whatever, addressing, first thing, a food plan, obviously, controlling the amounts, how are you going to control the amounts, but more importantly, the most important part, finding out what your stressors are and then learning how are you going to mitigate it. Because saying that I'm just not going to have stress anymore, <laughs> yeah, pull this leg, it plays jingle bells. That's going to happen. You're going to have stress. Stress is part of our life. It's the fight or flight response. It's there. It's always going to be there. But having a healthy way of mitigating it is your recipe for making this last long term. And this is what we're doing with our clients. This is how we're going to help them keep the weight off and not have to keep going back. Because if you're doing this for a short while, because right now I know the drugs are very expensive. So if people are doing this and they're going to quit and then they, well, if I gain more weight, I'll just go back on it. Now you're in yo-yo dieting and now you're into a serious, serious problem. I mean, that you want to talk about causing some serious heart problems. Yo-yo dieting, certainly we'll see it. Lost a, a good friend from high school due to that. And so I can't stress enough. I'm not against using these kinds of tools, but having the right plan on how to mitigate the stress, how to mitigate why, why you're overeating. That's your recipe for making this successful. Hey, look, if I can help you with that, reach out to me at area code 251-278-3343. That's 251-278-EDGE. You can also reach out to me at Garrett, G-A-R-R-E-T-T, -T, at personaledgefitness.com. That's our Facebook page. Also, our website. Hit me up on Twitter or X at, at Team PE. Listen, if you just want to come in and you happen to be either thinking about this or you're on it and you want some help on how to structure something for yourself to be successful afterwards, Come in. I'll, I'll do a free consult with you. I'd be more than glad to talk to you about it. Because at the end of the day, if we can completely mitigate obesity, and I had a, I had a hand in that, <laughs> I'm telling you, that, 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 that's something to hang your hat on. I mean, I'll, I'll die a happy man. But controlling that stress level, understanding why you overeat, if you address that, that's going to help you reach your level of wellness. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I hope to see you next time. Thanks for listening to the Personal Edge Fitness Podcast with Garrett Williamson. Subscribe now and be a part of the show by calling 251-278-EDGE or message us on Facebook and Instagram at Personal Edge Fitness or at Team PE on Twitter and visit us at PersonalEdgeFitness.com.